the taxpayers money and I just thank you that we could come together this afternoon in this free country to be able to exercise the government that we have and I ask all these things in your name amen amen I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all Okay, I'd like to call to order uh, our workshop meeting today, July 21st, 2015. I'd like to welcome uh, the folks in the audience. Thank you for taking your time uh, out of your schedule today to attend this workshop. Um, this workshop is going to be our opportunity as your elected representatives to collaborate openly and to make decisions that will decide the future direction of our public schools and the education of our children here in Clay County. Um, in this workshop, there will be an opportunity for um, the audience to ask questions after we get done with the presentation. Um, and so when that time comes, I will, uh, I'll ask if anybody has any uh, questions. Um, and certainly your participation is welcomed and appreciated. And so with that, our first workshop item is presentation of survey data from the Florida Association of District School Superintendents. Mr. Broski. Before we begin, point of order, Madam Chair, I would just like to say for the record, um, I had requested public records request five months ago, billing information, and I have yet to receive the detailed billing that I would like to have had. I feel that I am not informed fully, neither of the rest of the board, and I don't feel that any of us are truly informed to be able to make a decision as to what direction we should go with our legal services at this point because we don't know the actual cost of what everything is. I know we've gotten selective items that the district felt that they should release, but they did not comply with my full public records request, and I want that in the record. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Noted. Okay. Mr. Broski. Good afternoon. You know, um, some of you may know, may not know, I'm a history teacher before I became an administrator. I went back and kind of researched this issue of legal services in our district. And interestingly enough, this very same issue was January of 2000 that the board was, in fact, talking about this very same issue. And my goal today is just to provide some information for the board then to generate discussion on what to do about legal services. So what I'd like to do today is just provide information relevant to legal services, describe the current state of legal services in our district, where we are now, what services are being provided currently, as well as the cost of a full-time board attorney in relation to a part-time flat rate attorney, the cost that we uh, absorbed last year for legal fees, as well as compare uh, other school districts and what they do for legal services with a focus on medium-sized districts, because I think what you're going to see... I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Andrew, is it possible that you could lower that screen in the front there so we could get the view up there? Thank you. Sorry about that. I think, I think that what you're going to see is that legal services range from, I think one district was $1.2 million that they spent on legal services on down to an even smaller amount. And sometimes legal services are a product of what's actually happening in the district at the time. And I'll kind of share that with you. Ooh. Right now, our current it might be warming up there, Ms. Stuttered. Our current board attorney, Mr. Sykes, is, is, is uh, a fixed rate attorney. The co total cost is approximately $90,000 a year. That's derived from $7,500 a month, which is $6,000 in compensation for Mr. Sykes and, and $1,500 uh, for his assistant. The current board attorney provides legal advice in all areas with the exception of personal injury, workman's compensation, and labor issues, which has always been the norm, even when we had a full-time attorney. The current board attorney meets all job responsibilities listed on the job description for the full-time attorney. In other words, he's doing the work of a full-time attorney based on the job description previously written in 05. So the cost is essentially 
$90,000 a year, and I asked Ms. Legutko to come up with the approximate cost for Mr. Bickner in his last year, which was $230,000. I do have a, a detailed analysis of, the, of that if the board would like that I'd like to as see to that. how that, yes. that number had come up. Can you speak into the mic? The um, third legal area that the current attorney doesn't cover, it was workman's comp, labor, and what was the other? ESC? Is it ESC? Oh. Personal injury. Excuse personal me, personal injury. injury. I'm sorry. Okay. I've been handling the ESC issues. I'm sorry. <coughs> Basically, I'm, I am covering, there's a small claims litigation I'm handling right now, but for the most part, personal injury I'm not covering, HR I'm not covering, I'm not covering labor law, ADA, that kind of things. Uh, I am handling the ESC cases with Mrs. Ross. The, with, with contracts, I'm not redrafting the contracts. I'm sitting with Nancy Racine and I go over the contracts and I have, we've developed a form now where we have a checklist that has streamlined the system now where all the different uh, divisions have follow the same procedures on all contracts, all bids, all purchases, everything like that. And it has a clearing from the contracts, from risk assessment, and from the attorney's office. Okay. So basically the breakdown there you can see is, you know, $7,500. You see that uh, at the top, what you're seeing there is the actual cost the first month Mr. Sykes joined us, and then eventually he lowered his rate to the current rate, which is $7,500 a month. That's 6000 for him and $1,500 for the assistant, making $7,500. If you prorate that over 12 months, that's where you see that $90,000 figure come to. And then at the middle of the page you can see the the annual salary of the previous school board attorney their benefits their salary with benefits the assistant uh, the other the other fees that were associated <coughs> within that contract with the previous board attorney for a total of 230 so at the very bottom of the page you can see that when you do the math it's 90 versus 230 so that's a difference of 140 which is how that was calculated to come up with that cost. Where do I see the 140 at? Oh, uh, the very last sentence. Got it. At the very bottom. Sorry, just, just to taking the focus two. Focus my lenses. <laughs> <laughs> Got just it. Just taking the 230 and the 90, and doing the subtraction for a difference of 140 per year. Um, so the, the two, 230,493 um, under the previous school board attorney, did that include the out, all the outside services that we paid? It didn't include no, that. Neither, neither one of those would include Correct. So outside. this is just uh, salaries and benefits and things board, that we paid for the contract. Comparison of both attorneys. Okay. One under a flat fixed rate, mm -hmm. one under the board contract. Okay. Thank you. The salary right. for the full year, so it's also a fixed rate. Right. Something else I'd like to point out, um, and I don't mean to interrupt you, Mr. Brodsky, but when Mr. Bickner first came on, or prior to him, um, and Mrs. Studder and Mr. Van Zant probably will know this better than I, um, and there was a part-time attorney, we did not pay for the part-time attorney's secretary because the part-time attorney had a practice of his own the additional work that he had, his secretary did. So this also seems to me like if we're really looking to cut costs everywhere we want to cut costs, we should never have been paying for Mr. Sykes' uh, secretary at all. I think that should have just come under his, as his office staff instead of, you know, an extra $1,500. And what was it originally? Was it 3000 a month? Because that's what Mrs. Uh, 
Gaston was receiving, Ms. Gaston was receiving that, so mm -hmm. it seemed like you, the majority of the board went along with that, but that really should never have been. Thank you. Yeah, originally it was 3000 and it was mm -hmm. re reduced to 15 Right, but that's what we were paying, a full-time secretary right. 3000 not a part-time secretary of somebody who already had an established practice who was coming on part-time. We shouldn't be paying for his office overhead. So. Any other questions about the cost itself or the cost difference there? Mm -mm. Not, not for me. Okay, I'm going to pass out to you the results. in on the medium-sized districts in the red. Thank you. Is there a second? Is there a second thing? Or we just did. I'm going to pass another one out now that only separates the medium-sized districts out, because I think the data that you have in front of you, this would be a, a more accurate comparison. Some districts are much larger than our district, etc., or much smaller than our district. Thank you. So the second sheet is the exact same information except taking out just the medium-sized districts. So when you look through there, we asked districts to provide information about whether they were small, medium, or large districts, whether they had a full-time or part-time attorney for legal services. And we also asked them whether they paid at an hourly rate or a flat rate. Is the attorney on an annual contract, try to specify the contract year, exactly how much and then what they pay for all legal services and that last column is what do they have to contract out for other services and inter interestingly enough when you look at all of those medium-sized districts they all contract out for something else okay especially the labor HR stuff is all contracted out which is the norm and is the norm for our district also so when you look when you look through there you can see the amount that we're paying in legal services is lower than most districts that are out there especially only having a flat rate of a part-time attorney in uh, Hernando County in that column all the way to the right it says we are an NEFEC district what is that what is NEFEC okay my favorite one is the one that's asked how much they pay the attorney and they say hourly slash too much I saw that, that yeah that was my favorite one it was Oak Oka, it wasn't Okaloosa, it was uh, Martin, yeah.
Do you have documentation as to what we have spent on outside legal services? I do. Are you getting to that, or am I just jumping ahead? Again, outside legal services for Johns Eastern, which does our risk management liability. Do you have a paper? I don't have a paper, okay. but I can provide so you this. So we'll write it. This. Okay. Nancy Racine put this together, and she calculated it from April 1, 2014 through May 2015, which means it's more than a year by a month. But she had already had this documentation put together. Okay. So Johns Eastern is what? 47000 roughly. And what else? We had uh, the HR attorney for, this, for that time frame was 17700 roughly. Who is that? That's uh, Buchanan, Ingersoll, and Rooney that later became Fowler, White, Boggs. They had okay. a... Okay. They were Fowler, White or, first. Or vice right. versa, yeah. Buchanan, whatever's the new name. Buchanan, Ingersoll, and Rooney. Yeah. And that, that was 17700 roughly for that same time frame. Right. Now, keep, it, keep in mind, depending on what's going on, the year before we had a couple of um, high-profile discipline cases. I remember. As well as some arbitrations and some other stuff that happened. Mm -hmm. And that year, that ballooned up to, you know, 140-something. One, I, was, I was thinking 17.7 sounds awfully low. But yes. the 140. So it, was a great, it was a great year in HR. Let's keep yeah. it up. But so for another good year, and everybody behaved themselves. But the year before was 140,000. Hundred more than 140,000. I, I remember sitting in on some of those things. On the, they, it got. I'm hoping for it a 17-year yeah. myself. So is this it for this time frame, or is there any more? Uh, that's it for that time frame. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there was the legal action by the board in that in the dispute with Sniffen and Spellman, which right. was different. Mm -hmm. Well, that was kind of a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. right. And that was what, 25K? That was 52,000. 52,000. 25 mm -hmm. was the legal fees that we had to pay when the superintendent was going to take mm -hmm. the board to court. That OK. And, and that was it for that time frame. But again, it varies depending on what happens during that given year. That's right. And there's no way of really knowing um, what's been farmed out uh, to any greater or lesser degree than had been done previously. No, ma'am. That's kind of one of those things we don't really know. I wouldn't <coughs> know that the same way that when it comes to the labor attorneys, obviously a less less right, volume right, there. Right. So it, it just there's a lot that we don't know, but that you can't produce. I mean, it's. Uh, but I think the, uh, in my opinion, I think the important thing is that you're never going to be able to know what's going to come at you year by year to year in terms of outside legal services or the HR stuff. You're never going to be able to know that. I think I think something to budget for. I noticed in here they asked the question, how much do you typically budget for that kind of stuff? And I think we budget for it. But what we do know is we do know what we're paying for an attorney. And that's really what it boils down to because... Um, I think you're misunderstanding, though. The, what they're budgeting is just salary, I believe, not, not the um, risk management costs. Yeah, it... it and that, that could be, and I, I'll certainly get clarification on that. Um, but but it does say total yeah. amount. Total amount budgeted, yeah, which would include salary plus all the outside. Well, That's the way I read it, anyway. I think Mr. Brodsky, is this um, budgeted? Is this salary and benefits, or is this the risk management amounts also? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, okay, for Clay just, County, that's just salary and bud and uh, benefits, correct? The two hundred and thirty dollars that's there. Can, Correct. Can I so just I, clarify I this yeah, for yeah, the yeah. group on the survey? Yeah. Through FADS, just like FSBA, I have a mechanism where I can send one of the secretarial staff at FADS a list of questions and ask her to poll all 67 districts. Mm -hmm. So I sent the questions that you see along the top, mm -hmm. and 40-something districts answered. And just like the guy that said too much, I mean, the, the clarity and 
exactness varies. Okay. And so we got back what the other superintendents either took time to fill out and kind of how they said it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, back to my point, I think, again, we're never going to know uh, what kind of cost we're dealing with on the outside stuff, but at least with the what we're paying for the attorney, that's where I think we can achieve some savings. That's that's my my opinion. So. So I guess what I'll do is uh, I'd like to open it for some discussion to get, uh, I know you said you felt like you needed some more information. I know we can't do anything here, but we can have some discussion and we can talk about where you think we want to go for next steps. So I know we've, we've had this discussion, I think this is the third time we've kind of entertained some discussion around the subject. So I'd like to hear what everybody's thoughts are, at least where you're leaning <clears throat> and what your idea is for next steps. So I'll start with uh, Betsy. You wanna? You got anything you wanna throw out? Um, I don't. I appreciate the information here, um, and it, um, I think for me, it, it just goes back to especially after last week's budget workshop, and um, and just really thinking about that um, in the the past five days that whether whether what we would want to do in utopia mm -hmm. and what we can afford to do I think are two different things um, or may or maybe not um, but we are where we are and um, I haven't yet heard any legal services that are not being provided with the current costs that we are paying out and and I recognize that the 17,000 for the human resources is significantly lower than it was the year prior where there were issues and so somewhere in the if you use one as a low and one as a high somewhere in the middle was probably where an average would be mm -hmm. and so um, you know if you, if you combine that with um, the 47,000 with John's Eastern which is 13 months um, then we're roughly at 85 to 100,000 in outside legal services. It still looks significantly less than we paid in the past with the full-time attorney. And um, and I guess I would just say that you know, as I said in our April um, special meeting, we have asked our senior staff to be creative and innovative and combine things and try some new things and mm -hmm. um, I think that we've got to be willing to be innovative as well um, given our current budget state. Okay. Well I guess I'll go next. Um, well I think we, we all know I would prefer to have a full-time attorney. Um, I'm going to use an expression that you've used before Miss. McKinnon and Ms. Stuttered, is it a need or is it a want? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important that it's a need to have a full-time attorney um, and not a part-time attorney. Um, there are so many things that come up, having talked with principals, that, you know, a screaming parent at their counter because there's a custody issue going on in their reception and they can't get it, you know, they need to have an attorney call them back immediately. And granted, a full-time attorney sometimes might be doing depositions or something, but I would imagine that the majority of the time he or she is available. There's, um, there's so many issues that come up. You know, I have a list here. It's guardian issues, homeless children, the kidney venue issues, which are unaccompanied minor children, custody issues, surrogate parents, court order interpretations, you know, record subpoenas, appearance for subpoenas. There's so many things public records requests, gay rights issues, student safety. There's so many 504 and student disabilities, things that come up that have to be handled that I think it's really important that we actually have somebody down at the district office who's available for that phone call, whether it be a guidance counselor, a principal, a teacher, an ESE question. Um, I feel very strongly that we need to have somebody full time. And I think they're worth every penny that we were paying our previous attorney. You know, we talk about wanting to cut costs everywhere, but last month, 
month before we you know we created a new assistant superintendent for eight thousand and we made a a director two a director one for another seven mm -hmm. and then we took the assistant superintendent secretary and enriched her salary by twenty five hundred dollars and there's many more things that have gone on and I know you're you know the district's going to say well we've eliminated positions and we've you know if we were really truly about saving every penny we would have, yes, eliminated those positions, distributed the work, and not enriched anybody else's salaries, especially when you look at, you know, our teachers and our support and what they're dealing with. So it seems to me that, you know, we're, we're enriching certain people's positions and not something as crucial as this. You know, I think, Mr. Van Zant, you said at the, the workshop we had back in May that um, in order for the Information Service Department to fully function, we need to have Mr. Hendricks, uh, Mr. Um, Hendricks as a assistant superintendent, and that department was functioning fine. He's doing a wonderful job. No complaints about him, and I don't think we're really, you know, we're sitting here saying we we got to save, we got to save, and then we're enriching other people. So if we're going to spend money on something, we need to make sure that our legal services that we are. We have somebody full time looking at every aspect of everything to protect the district, and I feel very strongly about that. So that's my take. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I haven't gotten any phone calls from anybody with negative feedback about the services we've been getting. Um, I totally agree with you that we need availability, but I haven't heard that we haven't had it. Um, so I understand that concern, and if it became an issue at a certain point, I think we could look at the necessity of having a full-time attorney at that point. Um, but up until now, what we're doing is working, and it's saving us money. So I don't see, um, you know, the need for a, a change if it's if it's been working. And from what I've what I've heard from um, district staff and principals is that. Mr. Sykes has made himself readily available. Now, like you said, nobody's available 24-7 every minute of the day, but I haven't heard anybody say that it's taken him longer than 24 hours to get back with them on whatever it, the issue may be, mm -hmm. um, which I think is reasonable. And um, Not when you have, I don't mean to interrupt you, but think about when you have a <coughs> somebody at your front reception irate and you need, you need help right then and there. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my issue with it. Right. No, I didn't I, mean to interrupt you. No, I and I understand <coughs> that one one hundred percent. I understand that, but I'm not sure that making this a full time position will ensure that that attorney is going to pick up the phone every single time you call. I mean, people are out of the office. Um, you know, there nobody is available every minute, every second of the day. Um, so anyway, that's kind of my take on it, and I'll echo what you all said about our budget. Um, I just. I, in my mind, can't justify that added expense unless it proves itself necessary down the road. Um, I would be interested in hearing from Ms. Legutko if she has an opinion, um, since she's our budget expert, <laughs> on um, what we can afford as far as um, attorney and legal services fees go, what your opinion would be over the, the overall picture. Um, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but if you want to share now or later, I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are. If I could just jump in, I, um, if you want to speak now, that's fine. But I think since we, we're not going to be making any kind of a decision right now, I think she's probably going to cover that. In fact, I thought we were initially going to have the budget workshop first so we could get all of the, the monetary information in order before we talked about this. But but I, I'm hoping that that will be part of the discussion when we talk about the budget. Um, but certainly if you're prepared and you want to speak to that now, um, that's entirely up to you, Ms. Legutko. Can I address it after you? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. She, she wanted to know if she could address it at the, the budget workshop, so yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, my turn? Yes, yes ma'am. I'm sitting here thinking, we went through this, I believe Dr. Mr. Broski said in January of 2000. Mm -hmm. At that point, weren't you on the board, Mr. Van Zant? And I was on the board, so this is like deja vu. Uh, we discussed at length, uh, because we had had Mr. Scrooby for mm -hmm. 
years and years and years. He was the grandfather of school board attorneys. And Mr. Van Zandt and I and the other three who were on the board discussed this ad nauseum at length uh, that we felt that it was the district, and I don't know how large the district was at that time. Um, in 92, it was about half the size. So, you know, it was it was getting to be, I don't, I don't, I can't pull a number out of the top of my head of what our enrollment was at the time or how many employees we had. But the board felt very strongly in 2000 that it, we had reached the point where we needed a full-time school board attorney. Um, look at the county commissioners. I believe they have two attorneys full-time. Uh, we are the largest employer in Clay County. <coughs> um, I, I just, I thought, I wonder how the county commissioners would work if they had uh, hire an outside firm or... Actually, you know, they do hire outside. Yeah, well, I'm sure on there's some yeah. types of law, Ms. Mm -hmm. McKinnon, that they do resource right. out because obviously uh, one person isn't going to handle all of the different and they uh, handled some different things than mm -hmm. education law. But at the time, you know, and I, I wish I had known the January of 2000, I would have gone back and tried to go back and look and see what was said and why and the reasons why the board in 2000 decided that it was time that we had reached this point uh, that we needed to have in-house counsel. Uh, I am strong, strongly of the opinion that we need a full-time school board attorney, um, someone who has the time. I don't, you know, if you if you hired a new person and they uh, perhaps didn't have that much knowledge on education law, by going to conferences and networking with the other school board attorneys in the state. And, uh, and they have lines of communication helping each other. It's, a, it's kind of like a brotherhood. Um, I think, uh, you know, the first probably year, Mr. Brodsky, how long did you, when you were researching, did you tell me that Mr. Bittner worked with Mr. Scrooby? About a year, a year and a half? I forget how long it was. Almost a year. But he, I mean, he shadowed him, really, and had a year uh, uh, it was a very smooth transition, and um, nobody is going to know everything that they're going to be facing when they walk in the door, but he had a year to work with someone who knew it. He just had it in his head. Um, trying to take the personalities out of it, I feel like with the uh, Ms. Um, Carrick has brought out uh, some of the points of uh, on the day-to-day -day working uh, out in a school and needing someone immediately, not calling downtown Jacksonville, hoping that you can get someone. Also, someone who is here during board meetings, who knows the players, who knows the members of the audience who tend to speak each month and perhaps have an agenda, who knows the lay of the land, knows the people, knows the really knows the employees, knows the the audience, uh, and is here to protect this board uh, and the school district from um, legal harm. Um, you have to have complete faith in your attorney and what they. Uh, render in, in their opinions. Um, unfortunately, this last few months, I am very uncomfortable with some of the uh, opinions that I have heard, and I don't want to get into personalities, but uh, I'll be happy to share that with you. But I think that this district has gone far beyond uh, just hiring an outside firm. I was looking at some of these uh, counties. I've, I wish we had had this, you know, earlier, but I know you were working to get it up. But now like Clunk Collier County, that's Naples. That's, what, that's probably the richest town in the United States per capita. I know the first year I was married, I lived there, and that's what they told me. This is the first, the richest town in the United States per capita. This is where all the corporate heads had their fancy homes. I mean, they're, they have got money out the yin-yang down there, so they could pay whatever 
They want to, and they do. They pay quite well. Uh, then you look at Escambia with 42,000. Uh, they they pay 175 an hour. They don't list a total there. Uh, there. Let me look on down here to some of these that I was looking at. Uh, look at Lake County with 42,000. They said uh, they pay 175. It looks like it, that's I would an hourly assume that's rate. an hourly rate. And then they've got 325. Is in the budget last year. We spent 306. Well, I was looking even at what we. Uh, you said it was 230 that we had paid uh, Mr. Bickner, and did that include Sabrina too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Even even last the year before when we everything went crazy and we had some really <coughs> serious HR things when we spent the 140 uh, that total would have been like 370, mm -hmm. and that if you look down that puts us you know in the ballpark with districts that are more in the area that we are, I don't think that we are overspending on legal services, and I think that we have been kept um, safe legally. We haven't uh, been sued and had uh, someone come out against us. We, uh, we have been protected. We've had good legal uh, advice. And, and I count on that because there's the worst thing that can happen for this district is that we wind up getting someone who's maybe not real checked out on it and we get some bad legal advice. You may save $50,000, but sometimes, you know, there's a saying, cutting off your nose to spite your face. Uh, I don't want you to think long and hard about it. Um, uh, if I, I'm only one of five board members, but if I had my preference, I would put an RFP out and uh, advertise for legal ser of services and do like we did before. I think we brought in maybe four or five who we interviewed uh, in depth and really the board members really got to talk to them and you know get a feel for it and we found what we thought was a, a good fit and uh, I prefer to do that. You know, I'm listening to what y'all say, and I can see, you know, you're going to save 50000 or whatever. I don't even know how much the difference was. But are you really going to be saving? Because in my heart of hearts, I think sometimes that things were handled in-house and didn't have to go out that are now going out, and there's no way to put a number on that. But I suspect more things will be going to an outside attorney than would if we had an in-house attorney who can just, there are just so many things they can just handle that don't need to go to the outside attorney. Now, labor attorneys, <coughs> uh, the workers' comp, I mean, they, we're going to spend that no matter what we do for legal services. They, they're they specialists in that, that area. But as far as a school board attorney, um, I kind of I kind of like having someone who Mr. Van Zant or the board members or staff members can or the principals can pick up the phone and call them and they don't have to explain well yeah now Miss Roth she is ESE you know uh, it, it, there is a difference there uh, and I say again think about the county commission they're sitting there with two attorneys and I don't know what they make but I think they spend a whole lot on legal services More over there, uh, but it's 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 the majority rules. But I'm just telling you, sometimes sa looking like you're saving a few dollars is not really saving, and you're not. The worst thing is, it's not to me the money, and the money's important, but we need to have good, sound legal representation. Okay. And that's my biggest concern is that we have someone who knows what they're doing. Okay. All right. Um, is, so there, there's no way for us to know if we are f farming more cases out now than we did. Cause that's what I'm understanding. How well, I had requested no, we, that, but we we, seen we it. sent you guys everything that we possibly could over, I think, a, a year's period of time. It, it was a substantial packet, and I think we gave you all a printed out copy. Um, Mr. Sykes addressed um, the public record request in an email. He's re mm -hmm. addressed it here on record, mm -hmm. 
if you guys would like to come um, and look at actual bills, you may. But we've given you guys everything we can in public records that e exist without this board taking further action um, to release records of things that are currently pending. Mm -hmm. And it, at the chair's pleasure, if Mr. Sykes needs to clarify once again, um, you know, he could do that at your discretion. But we, we know what we've, um, quote, farmed out and what we haven't. Mm -hmm. And really that, that depends, like all of you have said, like Ms. Stutter just said, based on what happens in terms of employee discipline, slips, trips, and falls, that really doesn't vary depending on who or how often um, the school board's attorney is or how often they're in the office. That cost varies depending on yeah. situations beyond our control. Mr. Van okay. Vance, right, I agree with that. It, like you said, Ms. McKinnon, mm -hmm. that's going to change year right. to year. And so really, we need to decide do we want a full-time attorney? Do we want yeah, so I'd like to attorney? share my opinion if I could. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys had an opportunity. Um, so, you know, just basically getting a, a chance to look at this and then going back and reviewing the information that Mr. Sykes gave us before, um, basically reviewing the board meeting where we had some of our staff come forward and talk about, you know, the services that they had, um, you know, that they've gotten. Um, I am inclined to believe that um, a part-time, the part-time services that we're getting right now, I think are efficient. I think that they are satisfactory. I, I am inclined to believe that um, we had a full-time attorney before, and I think that that full-time attorney had a lot of time on his hands, and, um, and. I am not, I, I do not want to go back and revisit those yeah. things. Right. Um, but I will say I didn't get the best uh, a service from that attorney. Um, and I can recall a request that took 23 days to get a response to. And, and I had also heard the same kind of, now again, all, all, all I'm saying is that I think with the, the services that we've been getting for the past, you know, six, seven months, um, under the current model, I think are are sufficient, and I think they're providing a savings for us. So my opinion and my position is that I think that we go forward, we do an advertisement uh, searching for a part-time attorney at a flat rate because I think that proves to be the best model. Um, at a flat rate, and we can discuss further what we think that flat rate should be. I think that we have to, whatever that rate is, it has to be sufficient to draw the kind of attorney that is going to provide what Ms. Stuttered and everybody agrees needs to have some experience. We can't have somebody come in here just cold. Um, so, but again, I think that the 20 to 30 hours a week, I mean, I think it's been sufficient. I haven't, you know, like Ms. Gilhausen said, I haven't heard a peep about staff members or anybody from the public or, or anybody not being satisfied with the services that we're getting. And if I could just add, um, Mrs. Studdard, you referred back to 2000 when you guys were having this. I actually pulled up some, uh, did, did some digging back in history and actually pulled up some emails, got some emails. Um, of the when Mr. Bickner was originally hired and Mr. Scrooby and all of that stuff. And I think the times were very different back then. Back in 2000, this district had a very large fund balance and they could afford to pay for a full-time attorney. And yeah, we are a much larger district today, um, but we don't have the fund balance. And, th and I think that even goes more to the argument of why we need to try to you know, cut some costs here. I, I certainly don't want to cut quality and I certainly don't want to cut ourselves short, but if there's an opportunity, and you know, the other thing that I would say is that we could do it on an annual contract. So if we discover, if we, if we have a bad year and we say, you know what, then in a year, you know, we can change it. There's nothing that says that we can't change and go back. But, but I think that if there's an opportunity to have a savings, you know, 
um, I think that we need to do it, especially in light of where we are with our fund balance. And I, I, $140,000 savings is substantial. Again, I don't know, you know, what we would all agree would be a good flat rate, but that's my position. My position is that we go and advertise for a part-time attorney at a flat rate, and we continue with the model that we're going now. I'd like to point out that um, on this survey, um, only one third of the districts our size, and I actually, I think Putnam is a wannabe middle sized district. I don't know how they made yeah. the list at 10,000 students, but yeah. so if you pull them out, it's still, yeah. you know, only just a little over one third of the districts have in house counsel, and, um, and notably, St. John's is not one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and we all received, I would imagine, we all received, I think, I can't remember looking at the distribution, but um, Virginia Collins, who has spoken to this board on numerous occasions, sent us all a, an email um, asking us to um, do it like St. John's does. Um, and interestingly enough, they contract out their ESE mm -hmm. and HR, they say. Um, but at any rate, um, the ones who have full time that answered, we don't know if Bay at 275, if that's 275,000 or 275 dollars an hour. Um, Collier is 182. Um, Escambia, we don't know, 175 or 175 an hour. And then Indian River, um, I did the math on that one. They come out to 264,000 plus travel and copying fees, um, and then 170 dollars an hour for litigation on top of that. And then um, the Marion County is, I guess they don't really know what they pay their attorney. It's somewhere between 88000 and 101000 um, So it, it just, it, it, it intrigues me that other districts um, have not chosen to, um, to have um, a full-time attorney. And um, I'd be... I mean, I don't know how we would know why they haven't chosen that um, without going and doing a lot of um, watching of their board meetings and things like that. But it's certainly um, I, I don't I don't know what that I don't know um, why they haven't, but I, I think it's significant. And and I just I just think that going forward, in order to to move the ship around and and I'll, I'll say this again in the in the budget workshop we're going to have to ch do things differently than we have mm -hmm. in order to to move this ship and and be and make significant changes in the direction we want to go and then once our fund balance is restored um then you know we can look at things differently but i just think we need to take them in in um small steps right now and 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 I, i'm not sure that i agree with mrs Caracas that it's a need i i you know um we were discussing, and I was the one vote against it, but when we were discussing um, the advertisement for um, Assistant Superintendent for Business Services, um, Mr. Van Zant presented um, that we would change the job description and, and make that job different than it ended up being, and I remember the discussion being, no, this is too important of a job, we, we can't do that. And, and and I was the one vote against it because I think we just have to do things differently whether we want to or not, whether we would always choose to or not. We are where we are today. And, um, and it's not our money, it's the taxpayer's money. And um, I still haven't found where, I haven't had anyone tell me where we, legal services are not being provided where they should be. And I, the list that you read, I've read, I read the job description of our board attorney a lot of those things are not in that job description and I wonder is it opening the district up mm -hmm. actually for someone to to uh, represent our employees in some of those ways um, in not representing the board but representing the employees and um, I've had a number of conversations with different administrators who have different opinions on that as well so um, I just Okay. I think for the sake of the discussion, I want to allow everybody else to speak one more time, kind of as a follow-up, and then I think we're going to take a couple questions. I see Ms. Piva out there <laughs> waving her yellow card, so we'll let Ms. Piva come up. She has a question, and then um, and then we'll um, I'll try to get some consensus on how to go forward. Okay. So Ms. Gilhausen, you 
motion that you had something to, to say. I was just curious if you guys think it would be an option to write into the contract that um, even though you are hired at part time, we, the expectation is if your phone rings, you'll answer it, whether you're in the office or not. Um, if you're concerned about, you know, um, services. services not being met. I think, uh, Ms. Yeah, Mr. Sykes. Right now, as it stands, I had a phone call from one of the principals on the way here. Um, I, I, my understanding is the superintendent has given my cell phone number out to all the principals. I've received phone calls from principals in the middle of the night, early in the morning, at all hours. Right now, and I think Ms. Roth talked about the last time, when I'm not available because I'm in court, um, they contact Menta, my paralegal, who, who moves heaven and earth. They find me and get hold of me, especially if there's an emergency, and try, so I try to time and respond. So I, I've, especially when a principal has an emergency, if I'm in court when I get a recess, I've called and I've made phone calls, and, and so I've been available. But I guess I'm not saying you haven't been. Yeah. I'm just saying that. Could you write it into a raise contract? Raise that as a concern if we yes. should go with a different attorney, um, that, so that that need is covered, even if it's a part-time attorney. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I was going to suggest, um, maybe to consider that we do, like we did a survey of the other counties. Could we do a survey of our principals um, and ask them, has the part-time model worked for you? Um, and it can be anonymous or um, I don't it would have to be right <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah. Um, Nobody's just to gonna get answer that accurately well like I'm what I'm saying is I haven't gotten any phone calls right. you seem to say that you have so we're hearing issues. two different sorts of information and I would rather mm -hmm. us all have the full right. picture of mm -hmm. what has well, the service looked like for you at your school right okay mr. Vanzan is that something that's possible Well, I'm just thinking about the varied, I mean, pick, there's six of us here, We're very visible people. Mr. Sykes is very visible, the assistant superintendents. I mean, John Merrill's been his, in his job for a year. I mean, do I want to send out a survey and say, what do you think about support services? Because everybody, you know, somebody didn't get their sidewalk board or their covered right. walkway or, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know that I want to go down that road. Um, do you really think it would help you make it a, a decision here? Is that going to bring us to consensus? <laughs> I don't think you'll get accurate answers back, so I think you'll okay. be wasting staff's time. I think, okay. you know, people are not going to say what they're really thinking when their their name's attached to it or there's some link to it because, you know, it's, it's happened before. So okay. I think that that's probably staff just spinning their wheels and, you know, we're going to get something back that's mm -hmm. glowing because... Nobody wants to be the one to say they're not happy with the model that we're currently using. Okay. That's, that's my take on it. Okay. Do you, did you have I do anything? have something okay. else I'd like to say. Um, okay. And I was listening to what you said, Ms. McKinnon, and you used the word um, sufficient and satisfactory. And, you know, I think when it comes to our legal services, mm -hmm. that shouldn't be satisfactory. We should have the best legal services to represent mm -hmm. everyone in this district. And, you know, we might be saving, I think the number Mr. Brodsky said was 140000 Well, we all know that there are lawsuits that can amount to a, a much greater amount than that. And, um, I, I mean, I think it's crucial that this not be the one spot that we look to save and scamp. And, and you know, of course, the majority will, will mm -hmm. go, but I did I did get a list of duties from the previous attorney, and it's it's three pages long of, well, two pages long of, of issues that come up that may not be every day, but do come up in the course of a week or a month that need to be addressed. Can you provide us a copy oh, of Oh, I that? would make, yeah, okay. actually, if, if Ms. Uh, Ms. I don't think the copy machine's working copies, right now. Copies, you know, we can we get her to, to, but to, if you, you know, could, if yeah, you scan it and email absolutely. it, that would be great. But, um, you know, there's so many things in here that I read that, you know, you know, I didn't even realize were things that he dealt with. And I'm sure, you know, Mr. Sykes is capable of dealing with all of these and probably has dealt with mm -hmm. quite a few of these already. Um, but I just think, you know, if we hire a part-time attorney, it's somebody who has a private practice who has other issues. Mm -hmm. The school board of Clay County is not their number one priority. It's one of their priorities, but it's not their number one. And they may have something that's more pressing that they have to devote their time to, which is why I feel strongly that an in-house is the way that we should go. And it's a model that, you know, 
in 2000 when this district was growing and I, I wish we did know the size of the district at that time but I would imagine we were probably in the 20,000 range mm. um, it's a guess anybody know is it more or less 16,000 um, yeah I don't know but I would think that we've probably doubled in size since then and I think I just you know this is the one area I don't think we should skimp on okay. um, and it's and I'm you know it, it's it's I'm not going to get into the personalities either. You know, Mr. Sykes has done a fine job. I don't want to um, go into anything. I just feel mm -hmm. strong that if we're looking at a model, that mm -hmm. that's the model, and I feel it's worth every penny. Do you think that we could try a part-time for a year and then revisit, if we could agree that we revisit it after a year, that we will revisit it after a year? Would it, would it, would that... You know, I, I don't want to be difficult. <laughs> I'm good at being difficult. We know that, but I don't want to find a compromise to here. I'm trying to say I'm, if we could try it right, for a know, year I, and see how well, we here's do. Here's the thing. You know, the majority will vote and, and do what we think, but I feel strong that that would be an, mm -hmm. an avenue I would not want to take. Okay. I would really want to go with a full-time because, truthfully, the last six months, we're fortunate that nothing has come up that has been an issue and that Mr. Sykes has made himself as available as he has. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think, you know, there's there's probably a lot of times where the, the schools or ESC has had to wait on him getting back to them. And no fault of his because, you know, he has returned their calls and he's doing what he's supposed to. But if we had an in-house, it would be you know, much quicker response and he would be available. You know, ESE hearings, depositions, you know, the attorney goes in when, when the employees have to have a deposition, he's there with them. Mm -hmm. Because when he's not representing us, he's representing the district and mm -hmm. the superintendent and, and the rest. So I, I think that, that that's, that's the way that I feel we need to go. Okay. Thank you. Miss Stuttered, your turn. I don't have anything okay. else to say. Okay. All right. Great. Except okay. So everybody, everybody's good. Um, at this time, I want to Miss Piva. Did you have uh, a question? You get to ask a question. Okay. So just just so you understand, it's a workshop, and so you're only allowed to ask questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's fine. I, okay. It's, it's questions that I have. Um, okay. Uh, I am concerned my question, it, well, I guess I don't know how to phrase this because I hear principal, 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 but I can tell you where the teachers are and you haven't received calls, I'll make sure you do. Because we do have teachers that have been subpoenaed and teachers who have to be given deposition and have not had any advice in the current situation. Okay, Mrs. Even. Piva, if you have a question, you can ask a question. Okay. But, okay. Under the current, under the I don't want to be rude, but that's do. the, that's the rule. If you're going to do rule. the system you're going to do, <laughs> are teachers going to be allowed to call Mr. Seitz? That's a, that's a question that I do have because that's, I just want services. Okay. Okay. And that's what my concern is. And I, I am representing the CCEA. I'm representing sure. the teachers. And the teachers, we need to get services. Is that phone number going to be available to teachers also? Okay. There's my question there. Um, my second question is, I'm concerned when I look at the counties that mirror us, and the counties mm -hmm. that mirror us is always Leon, Osaloosa, um, Santa, Santa Rosa, and, and um, St. John's. Yep. So whenever we compare apples to apples, those are the four counties because of they represent us. They're medium-sized counties, and they're about the same as our population. There is a huge difference, and this is my question. These counties are contracted for ESE and HR, and they have a separate attorney and separate attorney, and I just, I just can't understand how, you know, we're going to say that they're paying 200, a quarter million dollars or 309 thousand dollars but we're going to be able to have these services with a ninety thousand dollar attorney and also HR running seventeen thousand is that what we're saying HR is running no yet? I think the answer to your question is that the numbers that we're talking about the ninety thousand that's just the, the flat rate for the attorney these services are above and beyond that and that's even how it is with all of these districts right so right. the seventeen thousand isn't really that was just a good this year yeah that, that's not a good you can't that predict fluke. that yeah you can't that predict that fluke. yeah okay but you know I I will see that you all get the Telephone calls. Okay. Wait, can I? So ask to a answer the question, back, 
in the current model that we have, yeah. can the teachers right now call our attorney and, and may, have may an I, answer? Yes, Mr. Yeah. Sykes. I have teachers call me whenever they want to call me. They can contact me. They, if they want to ask the principal's phone, phone number, they, I'll, I'll call. I'll talk to them, absolutely. Here's the problem, and this is the issue that's come up, and I've addressed this with the principals, and I've addressed it with a number of teachers. When teachers get subpoenaed to go to a hearing on a custody case, on a divorce case, they are not being subpoenaed as, as official witnesses from the school board. They're not. They're being subpoenaed as fact witnesses. As such, I cannot go in there and object. I can't say, you know, objection to harassing. The, I'm not an attorney to the party, uh, to the, uh, the lawsuit. As such, I have absolutely no standing in the lawsuit. I have no ability to object. I have no ability to tell a lawyer what to do. I have no ability to make exceptions with the judge. And as I've advised them and I've told them that the bottom line of it is that the lawyer for the school board does not have the authority to do any of the things that some of these teachers are looking for. Additionally, if they, if they had their own attorney, and let's say they went and they paid for their own attorney, their own attorney can't object. Their own attorney can't intercede and can't do anything in the action. So if, if they want to have a lawyer, essentially, and I, I'm not trying to be you know, condescending at all, but if they want to have an attorney to be there to, to hold their hands or, or, or to answer their questions, they can do that. They can always call me. But if they want a lawyer to come in there and appear in a court proceeding, they aren't going to be able to do that, whether they pay for their own attorney or they have me do it, because in order to object in a proceeding, you have to be a counsel of record and you have to represent a party to the proceeding. If you are not a counsel of record and you are not a party to the proceeding, you can't do objections. So if they're harassing a teacher, there's nothing I can do about it in the courtroom. So in that explanation that you just gave, is that... Does that have anything to do with your part-time or full-time status? No. It, it, even if I was a full-time attorney, I would have the same answer to them okay. because, I mean, I, I understand Mr. Bickner would occasionally go to some of these depositions and the hearings, but at the same time, I would tell you that, that fundamentally, if, if, if he tried to intercede in the proceedings, I don't know why he would do it or how he would legally do it because you cannot do it. Okay. I understand. Okay. Mrs. McKinnon, in the uh, mm -hmm. districts that Ms. Piva pointed out that are the closest that mirror us, I'm not sure our 90,000 is off base because um, St. John's says they, pr they have a $100,000 retainer um, and then they say they um, vary, we budget an average, but they do, that retainer would come from what the, um, what the law firm has decided is about what they would need. Santa Rosa says typically less than 70000 for board attorney. We contract for other attorneys. And then Okaloosa, it's really hard to figure out because they do a $675 retainer plus 175 an hour mm -hmm. and they don't tell whether that's monthly or whatever. So I'm not sure that our, our 90000 is off base with those others that are similar to us. Yeah, I don't think so either. The way that I, the way that I read this data, and I, I, I could be reading it wrong, but the way that I read this is the column where it says, do you pay an attorney an hourly rate or flat rate? That figure that's in there is my understanding is what they're paying the attorney. The column that says, do you have a total amount budgeted or typically spent annually for all legal services, that would be your attorney plus all those outside services that they budget for, but that doesn't mean that that's what they pay. They could pay more. They could pay less. I think that's just the question is what do you bud what do you do you typically budget for legal services? And if so, I think it's intended to just give you a, a, an idea of what they might pay on an annual basis. So I would agree with you. I, I don't think our 90,000 90, is, is off base. So, okay, um, so to move forward, I, I just want to talk about next steps. So um, I'm going to propose, and we'll just go try to get a consensus, okay? Um, I, I would like to propose that we go out, and I don't, I don't know if the process is an RFP or if we just advertise. I don't think we have to go out with an RFP. I think we can just advertise. I got some correspondence from Mrs. Racine that she had sent me with some policy that said you don't have to go out with an RFP. I think we can just advertise, and we can advertise through the FSBA or whatever other means that there are. 
but I would propose that we go out with an advertisement uh, for a part-time attorney at a flat rate of 90000 um, for, um, I would say, for uh, on an annual contract to be renewed every year, to be revisited. And that way, I think if if we decide that first year that this isn't working, then we can we can go revisit it. And um, and then, you know, from there, we'll, we'll get some applicants. Um, I think, you know, depending on how many applicants we get, we'll go ahead and we'll do some interviews, and then we'll go forward from there. In the meantime, though, we'll, we'll stay with the current services that we have until we get a, an, another attorney in. So do I have any... Uh, objectors or anybody that agrees with that or can I get any kind of consensus on that or if no consensus then let's hear another idea I disagree okay I, I agree okay miss stuttered I can count to three okay <laughs> miss miss Condon what what's your I can I can live with that okay all right so um, I think what we'll do is next steps going forward is we have a consensus by majority um, that we will go ahead and advertise um, through the FSBA. We want to do it through the FSBA. Um, we can find out what do we know what other means before we advertise what through is the uh, attorneys. What is their um, affiliation? Oh yeah 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 the. No, um, there's a actually there's a school board, school board yeah. Yeah. We can attorney. Run that yeah, there's we should run it through that. There's a school board and attorney thing. Yeah. yeah, school board attorney Bad. association. Right. Uh, are you also uh, including in that? Uh, I'm just thinking. Are you also going to uh, uh, hire a um, paralegal? Are you expecting this man or woman to bring their own paralegal, or what? How, what are you going to do about that? Mm. I think we probably need to have a paralegal, but uh, most attorneys. Have yeah, a they, they most of them have one, right? So. But our ninety thousand included it. Yes, our ninety thousand included it. So I would say that we, I would say we go with what we got now. And what are you calling part time? How many hours? What twenty to thirty hours? Is that about? What the right now the, under the contract is up to 20 hours a week. Up to 20. Up to hours 20. A week. Okay. Not very much. Mm. Yeah. I, we don't have to do you know up to 20 hours a week. We could do 20. To, is tw does 20 hours a week is that is that sufficient for you or do you typically do more? What do you, what do you? I I have never kept a billing record. There have been times where I've done more. There's been times where I've done less. I mean, so I, I mean it, it, I I can't tell you how many exactly but uh, but 20 hours essentially has covered my time and I'm a multitasker I have m multiple plates going the exact same time that's just the nature of how I operate okay does this work out to be what two days a week working well I would say I would say the district. we could say between 20 to 30 hours a week and however they want to spread that time out I wouldn't say you have to be there on Tuesdays and Thursdays but I would say that you know, they, they, they'll they get a feel for how they need to, you know, distribute their time. But we could say 20 to 30 hours a week distributed, you know, across the week, um, you know, unless, unless you guys are uh, very strong that they need to be there on a certain day or whatever. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't think we'll that have to fluctuate with what's going on in the district. Yeah, absolutely. I think they need to distribute their time equally. Right. Ms. Gilhausen, you were going to say something? No, you covered it. Okay. All right. Okay. Did that answer your question about the paralegal? So we, uh, a part-time attorney, 20 to 30 hours um, with a paralegal um, to distribute their no, time? No benefits. I don't think we, uh, no, I don't think no we provide benefits. And 90000 for the p attorney and the paralegal. Yeah, that's what we're paying now. And if we don't get any takers on it, then we obviously will need to revisit it. Right. That's what I would say. We, it's a place to start. Is there anything that I have not included or anything that I've left out that we need to consider, Mr. Van Zandt? What I'll do 
here, here's what I've written down. I've written down one thing that you didn't say, but we can review some other ads. Is yeah, mm -hmm. list the scope, scope of work. work, but just nouns and verbs here: advertisement, flat rate, part time, twenty, thirty hours a week, ninety thousand, all inclusive, no benefits, and um, a scope of work. And I, I agree with what I think that we have consensus with. We're going to continue to um, contract out for HR. Uh, mm -hmm. workers comp and uh, personal injury and those other things that we're covering in-house we would like that guy to cover so we can get with Miss Racine look at the old advertisement maybe get an advertisement that another county's used and put something together that makes this look like an, an intelligent body seeking right. viable services so I think we can handle that do do we need to bring that back to the board for us to approve before we go out with any kind of advertisement is that that's totally at your discretion if you want us to come up with an advertisement we will if you want us to bring it to the board in August and approve it we can do that what do you guys want to do I'm fine either way okay we're fine okay I have a so question yeah if we um, if when we go out for this advertisement if the resumes that we get back um, are not what we would deem as um, the qualifications that we'd like are we bound to stay within what we've advertised or can we then re-advertise I think at that point you've re you revisit I've you know it's just like anything else you can re-advertise a job if you put out a, a bid for somebody to do anything build a, a building run your internet for you and you don't you're not comfortable you deny all bids and you know do whatever you think you have to do to get that quality of service raised okay. so if you don't like any of what you got we'll start over <laughs> okay. so the contract that we have right now with mr. Sykes that does that provide the work of scope that we're talking about for a part-time attorney I think it does doesn't it or it does I see him shaking his head over there yeah so is, is that that's a place that we could start right okay and then the job the current job description we would include that because that doesn't the job description also detail the scope of work as well okay okay all right um, so with that I think we are done here so I will oh uh, superintendent requests I don't have any thank you okay uh, school board requests okay we're all good and we will adjourn okay so we've got about 45 minutes before we uh, start the special meeting oh yeah you can keep that